Thank you for joining. In the next few lessons, we will start practicing with controllers. We will explore the available options to implement controllers and understand how they work in Netcore 7. The topic of controllers will be divided into two parts. The first part, which we are currently covering, will focus on creating controllers using the add controllers and map controllers methods. This will include a simplified version with various examples. The second part will be more extensive covering controller base method, swagger integration and connecting to SQL server. So the current lesson will mark the beginning of part 1 of the controllers topic. We'll create a simple control using the add controllers and map controllers methods. If we take the code from the previous lesson and add additional random endpoints, the code will grow. This is happening even now with only 5 example endpoints. Now imagine having hundreds of endpoints. In such a case, this code becomes unusable and unreadable. Debugging would also be a challenge due to the code size and accumulation in the same place. Therefore, controllers organize middleware for logical intent, enhancing flexibility and maintainability while providing a convenient layer of abstraction. So, the process begins with a request being sent to a controller. The controller then calls the logic to perform necessary operations. Following this, the logic returns the results, which are finally rendered in a view and presented to the user. Controllers are typically organized into folders based on their functionality. For instance, you might have a folder for controllers that handle user accounts, another for controllers that deal with products, and a folder for helpers, and so on. Now let's imagine we need to authenticate a user. If a user has passed authentication, then the user writes a block or access a dashboard. Grouping all these steps is exactly the controller's logic. To create a controller in Visual Studio, press Add, then choose New Folder, let's name it Controllers, which is convention. Then from the menu you can choose Controller, if this option is available. Alternatively, choose a new item and then select MVC Controller Empty. Before we start learning the MVC pattern, it's important to understand what a controller is and how to use it. MVC stands for Model View Controller. From previous lessons, we know that the model represents the application's data, the view displays the data to the user, and the controller handles user input and updates the model. The automatically generated class name by Netcore 7 is Home Controller. If you remove the word controller from the class name, it won't be recognized as a controller. So the presence of the word controller in the class name signals to Netcore 7 that this class will function as a controller. Also, the inheritance from a controller class can be removed to simplify the controller. Removing the controller class means the view method will not be available. In fact, we don't need it at this point, since the view aspect of MVC will be discussed later. Now let's make the controller somewhat responsive. I will add a return statement with a simple string. So, because this controller receives requests, it can also send responses. To make this system work, we need two essential components. The first one is to register this controller so that it can respond when it receives a request. As you recall from previous lessons, a register means we need to add it to the builder instance services or simply put inject it. I will quickly clean up the code and remove unnecessary items. Additionally, we will register the add controllers method. By doing this, we request Netcore 7 to manage the available controllers classes. No matter how many controllers we add, all of them will be registered with the builder using the add controllers method. The second component we need is to create an endpoint that responds to our requests. After all, our request should be directed somewhere. Drawing from what we learned in previous lessons, we can continue to use use routing and use endpoints methods. However, if we employ the same approach as before, where we register each endpoint and its logic individually, things can get messy. You might recall that in previous lessons I mentioned that this approach is not ideal. Let's bring back those green squiggles to see the issue more clearly. Once again, Visual Studio is pointing out the usage of a using points method. Although the code will work, it is better to avoid this approach. This is why Visual Studio recommends making our code more reusable and organizing our URLs. Now we can remove all unnecessary code and introduce the map controllers method. 
yet, as you can see, these green squiggles are still present, indicating that the code isn't perfect just yet. To remove those green squiggles, we simply need to use the map controls method directly on the app. And we can do this by removing the use routing and using point methods. The reason we can do this is that map controls includes all the logic and functionality that were previously available through use routing and using points. It's as simple as that. Now this code has become much cleaner and easier to read. This is exactly where the map controls method proves useful. When we use add controllers, it registers all controllers as services in the application and map controls allows controls and routing to work. Next, let's define the route using an attribute which is written inside square brackets. If I leave the URL in empty quotes, the root URL will trigger this endpoint. Let's build it and we will see the response. This declaration means we have connected this logic to execute when the root URLs and points is called. If I change the endpoint's name, I'll need to use that new name in the browser to trigger the endpoint. I'll adjust the URL name and add a slash to make it clear that this endpoint is meant for the root URL, not just empty quotes. And as always, lessons assignments. At the conclusion of each lesson, I highly encourage you to complete the assignments as they will greatly contribute to your progress in ASP.NET Core 7. By consistently practicing, you will see faster results in your learning journey. And the assignments answers you can download from the GitHub. The link is below. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest video by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!